everybody. So I'm here in my studio and uh, still have a few technical bugs to resolve, like the um, sound quality. I have an external mic on top of my camera and it tends to pick up background noise, like from the camera and from the LED lights. So there's a couple of things yet to be resolved before I can get this place really, you know, running like a smooth machine. But um, I would like to talk about um, Nicole Arbor and her infamous video, Dear Fat People. I first saw this when, before, when it first came out because I am subscribed to her channel. And so when, when I saw notice of that, I immediately went into it, had a, had a few good laughs from it and didn't give it a lot of thought really you know it wasn't hitting me personally so i just thought it was i thought it was kind of funny i again i didn't go deep into the content i'm not a comedian expert i know there's a lot of you out there that don't think she's funny you you mentioned about the jenna marbles rendition and how terrible she's of a job she's done of that and i agree the whole jenna marbles thing doesn't really go off very well um, but other than that you know I had a few laughs and um, I basically moved on uh, it was no big deal for me and it didn't surprise me that uh, Nicole would do a video on fat people uh, because prior to that she did a video called dear Instagram model where she's slamming uh, young women who are posing on Instagram, showing off their bodies, and calling them unpaid whores. So for her to do this video on fat people, it didn't, it didn't take me by surprise at all. Um, but now, you know, this became bigger than life. And so before you knew it, uh, her video went viral, and there was a big uproar around it. There was a lot of people that were offended. And, uh, you know, many of them put out their own response videos uh, critical of Nicole Arbor and her video. And that's the right thing to do. It's called freedom of speech. And we should be very thankful that in our country we have that. Um, probably my favorite response was by Erica Watson. She's a stand-up comedian. And yes, she's fat. And she's black. And it... Her response is just, on the one hand, it's hilarious, but she hits hard. She hits hard on Nicole. And so if you, I'll leave a link in the description box. Uh, you got to check it out. It is funny. Um, so anyhow, on the other hand, you had those who were offended and decided to flag her video, even though there was no violation of any YouTube terms. And this happened to such an extent that her channel was uh, disabled, at least temporarily. But I'm sure if you have that happen to you, you don't know. You, um, YouTube or Google, they don't inform you that your channel will, will be back up and running again. You're kind of left in the dark at that point. And uh, so it must be for somebody who's trying to build a career on YouTube, it must be a, a frightening experience to go through that. Um, but what was clear here, there was a group of people out there that wanted to censor her. They wanted to silence her completely. Forget about your, um, the, the, the right to, to speak your mind, uh, freedom of speech. Forget about all of that. Uh, she offended a certain group of people. We got to shut her down. We got to shut her up. Besides, she's skinny and attractive. She has no right to speak to fat people in that manner. And um, and so yeah, I mean, for me, my back went up against the wall, and I'm thinking, great, the politically correct police have come out to do their job, and you know, personally. I hate anything that's politically correct. I really do. It makes our world so bland. I mean, I don't even like going to social gatherings anymore because I'm afraid to speak in case I might offend somebody. And I will because I'm outspoken. I say stuff and then think about it afterwards. And, you know, it would, within five minutes, I would be offending somebody that, you know, I've crossed the politically correct line. And so... 
you know, for me at this point with all the hysteria going on around the video, I took it as being a, an attack on uh, freedom of speech and that this was just another example of the tyranny of political correctness. And I think there was definitely that going on there. But I also, as time went on, and this, this, you know, this whole controversy just wasn't going away, I realized, hold it, you know, there's more stuff here going on. Like, why is this particular group of people getting so upset about this video that really is just satire, it's comedy, whether it's good or bad, that's, a, that's a, another discussion, discussion, but this was just meant to be a satire. So I decided to sit down in my thinking chair and think more deeply about this. What is really going on here? Why all this controversy around this video that I found that was kind of funny, you know, like I don't get it. And then, then I realized like what is really going on here and that is the overall message of the video and how people that are really struggling with their weight took offense to this and that is it was like a tough love message without the love. Um, Nicole is more or less saying in the whole video get off your friggin butt and do something about it. Stop playing the victim. You got to get out there and you know do something like get Get your act together, basically. And that's a tough love message coming from somebody who probably really doesn't care. Now, that's the way um, people of that particular group took this message, and they took extreme offense to it, and rightfully so, because um, it's not always like the whole issue with obesity, for example, is actually pretty complex. Um, for example, there, there, are, there can be many levels to this that need to be addressed. It's not just a matter of telling somebody, well, you know, put down that uh, bag of chips and uh, start eating healthy and exercising. There's other stuff going on. Like, for example, there could be childhood trauma that they have never really resolved. And it doesn't matter how much they want to change. They always fall back into that situation where they're binging on food because that's where they feel secure. Uh, it could be um, social and economic reasons. You may have been brought up in poverty where you, your family couldn't afford to buy you healthy and nutritious food, so you basically ate junk all your childhood life, which caused you to be obese. There's, I mean, there's other reasons, too, why people are str struggling with weight. It could be genetic. Um, it could be uh, hormonal reasons. You're you know, your thyroid might not be functioning functioning properly, and then you need medical attention. So these are, you know, the whole issue around being overweight and being fat is more complex. And it's so complex and such a huge problem today that we can look at this and say this is a disease. This is not just a lifestyle choice. It's a disease. And when you look at it that way, I mean, this would be like Nicole Arbor telling somebody with stage four cancer in his bedroom, just get out of bed, stop being a victim, get up and heal your cancer. Like that's kind of how it comes across. You're dealing with a group of people that are not just making bad lifestyle choices, that, it, but that in many cases are actually suffering from a disease. Now for me, her message would have worked. I mean, I was overweight at one time, and nobody came up to me and, and, and told me that I was fat and I need to get my act together. But what did it for me was basically going to the doctors, getting a complete physical, and finding out that, hey, you're not that healthy. Your, your lifestyle is killing you. You will die young. And that was the... <laughs> That's what it took. That was the tough love message for me. My own body basically told me enough is enough. You got to change your ways. And it worked for me. I mean, I didn't have the other complexities with dealing with, um, you know, being overweight. It was a simple um, sit situation that what was causing my excess weight that was hurting my health was my lifestyle. And I needed to change that. So it was really simple for me. And I did that. Yes, through a high carb, low fat vegan diet. It worked really well. But, uh, you know, this is, 
the whole issue of obesity is definitely far more complex than that. And so that's why her video became so controversial, controversial and offended so many people. But what I found offensive was what was coming out of the high-carb, low-fat vegan movement in response to Nicole Arbor's video, Dear Fat People. Um, and that, you know, was basically the the likes of like Freely, the Banana Girl, and uh, others who were using the controversy surrounding Nicole Arbor as a basically piggybacking that controversy to promote their own message that there wasn't really a true concern as to what was going on here. It just really was about getting the high carb, low fat vegan message out to all the fat people because, you know, now they're all offended. Every, this has become, you know, front page news. This is our opportunity to go in there and give them the truth, our truth. And I just found that to be really cheesy. And, and it's no better than Nicole with her tough love message of no love of get off your butt and do something. I mean, you're basically saying the same thing, but now you're saying get off your butt and be a high carb, low fat vegan. And that's what was coming across here. So, uh, and probably the worst was, um, actually there was one um, video that I watched this morning by um, a couple of high carb, low fat vegans, and it's really good. I. I'll talk about that at the end though. But first of all, the the, the worst of, of the worst in the vegan community was by um, Carrie McCarpet. Her video response to Nicole Arbor was just a hack job, pseudo analytical attempt to get into the mind of Nicole Arbor to try to come up with a motive as to why she um, did this video and uh, she basically makes these um, sweeping assumptions that Nicole herself could possibly be a victim of um, fat shaming and that she struggles with weight and maybe she's calorie restrict re restricting just to stay thin and that's why she hates fat people and she's lashed out on them. Again, this was totally baseless. There was no facts to back it up whatsoever. And all it really was, that whole psychoanalytical babble that came out of her, was really just building up to promote the high-carb, low-fat vegan lifestyle. And she even threw in uh, a promotion piece for Dr. Doug McDougall and his book, The Starch Solution. It was obvious. It was the. It was deplorable, really. But yet, you know, she she was basically just preaching to the choir because all the comments was, "Oh, that was so deep. That was, you know, you know, true analysis and all this stuff." And yet, nobody. I don't know. Like it was like, couldn't you see what was going on here? Um, like. Carrie really doesn't know anything about um, Nicole. I don't think she really knows what she eats, what her diet is. And, you know, maybe she's right. Maybe Nicole does have this, you know, issue with fat people because she's struggling herself. But we don't know that. That's That kind of information is not available. At least I don't, as far as I know, it's not available. What I do know about Nicole, though, is that she's actually physically disabled. And, um, yeah, she got into a couple of pretty bad car accidents that left her bedridden. The doctors uh, did not give her a very bright future in terms of her mobility, and yet she took it upon herself to um, get, get out of bed and overcome the chronic pain that she was suffering and try to return to some level of normalcy in her life. And so basically she refused to play the victim in the situation. And probably, you know, if you want to be analytical about Nicole's motive, maybe that's where it's coming from, that she had to fight like hell just to live a normal life again. And she's still fighting like hell because she's not completely recovered. She's still disabled. She has to go twice a week for physiotherapy. She needs to get acupuncture. And so she, she's, you know, she just refuses to be a victim. And regardless of what's happened to her, she's stepped out and she's becoming something. 
And so, you know, if there is anything, then maybe that's what, what this is all about. Because she's come from this tragic situation. She's able to rise above it. Why can't fat people do this? So, I don't know. There could be something to that. But I think there's at least, you know, if, if Carrie had taken the time, maybe she would have clued into that. That, that maybe perhaps that's what, what is really going on here. But probably on Carrie's part, there was a little bit of self-projection going on. Again, I'm just making an assumption here. Um, anyhow, uh, but let's get to the one video that I found to be a real gas. And uh, that was by the Light Twin Brothers. They, you know, when I saw their video, um, a response to Nicole Arbor, I thought, oh, great. Another lame ass video by uh, a vegan on, you know, they're going to do the typical stuff here. And what I was surprised, I was pleasantly surprised. This video is funny. I mean, I was laughing hard, okay? And, it, and I'm not an easy person to get going here, but. Um, yeah, I was truly laughing hard. It was funny and no question about it. It was they were setting you up to hear the message about high carb, low fat vegan. And they even threw in, you know, the whole um, how eating meat hurts the planet and all that stuff. And so they put everything in there about veganism. All, all the veganism went in there. But the way they did it was like you didn't mind hearing it you know they, they because they they threw in the humor element and uh the way they delivered the message was just like easy to accept and digest and if any video from the vegan community will have an impact on non-vegans it will definitely be this one by the light twins way to go brothers you did a fine job there anyhow that's about all I have to say on this controversy. I hope eventually it will die away, but it definitely has touched a very sensitive nerve here. And I think as vegans, you know, if we want to do a response to this whole controversy, like get a little creative here, you know, don't be so blatantly obvious with your didactic in, uh, intentions, you know, just because non-vegans see right through that. And uh, look at the light twins and what they did. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't have to do what exactly their style, but find a more, um, let's say brilliant way of delivering the message. Anyways, take care. Have a great day. I hope the sound quality is a little bit better. I'm going to try to edit out some of the background noise on my iMovie, uh, uh editing thingy majiggy and, uh, take care. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. Don't be shy. Leave your comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Bad Daddy Vegan.